All right, guys, I'm back uh, on the trail here. I was, uh, I met a hiker going in the opposite direction. We both learned that uh, we were at the same place last year. I did a road trip last year from the East Coast to the West Coast and back. It took about 45 days to do it. And I lived out of my, uh, I have a Jeep. I live out of my Jeep and that saves money. Rather than checking into hotels, I would uh, just camp out uh, at a lot of these uh, truck stops, uh, specifically the uh, Love's Travel Stops, because there you can uh, fuel up, get something to eat, take a shower. This uh, lady, we were at the, a lot of the same places out there, Devil's Tower in Wyoming, Yosemite, Sequoia National Park, and the Grand Canyon, and many other places, right? So I got a little bit distracted there. Yeah. On this video, I just want to talk. Listen, I know that many of you are confused about me. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, conventional, I'm not conventional. I thoroughly believe that uh, religion is the number one problem in the world today. And that religion is mostly ritualism, it's lots of talk and no action. And it is a deceiver of the masses. Yet, people say, well, if you, if that's how you feel, then how is it that you believe in God and you believe in Christ? Man, I thought that was a snake right there. I had to take a step back from a distance. <laughs> um, well, that's a very easy question to answer. I don't believe that uh, God sent his son into the world of mankind to establish any religion. Yeah, Christianity. God sent his son into the world to establish a brotherhood. It is men who created religion. So I worship the creator of the heavens and the earth, not the one that uh, Christianity has put together and fashioned and portrayed in art, film, and literature. I worship that one God. And I follow, I follow the one who knows the way to him. The one that the world knows as Christ Jesus. Now I know that that was the name that he was called back in the day when he lived because that's an English rendition of his name. Well, I think you guys understand what I'm talking about here. You're, I believe all persons are reasonably intelligent. I also believe that uh, a lot of people are simply They've been misled and deceived, so therefore they don't know. I was in that group. I just didn't know. But I knew deep down inside, something wasn't wrong because what Christianity was teaching did not add up with what Christ taught. Christianity was making stuff up. You see, I'm like this. If I'm gonna be involved in something, I'm going to be involved in it. I'm not going to be playing around with it. And I want to know what it is. I want to know what's going on. So I'm listening to preachers and pastors and elders teaching and saying one thing, yet Jesus is saying something completely different. They'll say things like going to heaven, being tormented in fall eternity and in hellfire. The rapture, the Trinity, Jesus being God, and many other things. And I'm like, well, wait a minute now. There's a spider right there. I'm doing what's called silt blazing. In other words, across the path here, you'll see spider webs. And that tells me that uh, if there are spider webs, no one's come this way. If the spider webs are not there, that means someone was here before me 
and basically uh, knocked them down just walking on the path. But my point here is that these preachers and pastors and teachers were saying one thing, and I'm reading a scripture. Well, where are they getting all this stuff from? Jesus didn't teach any of this stuff. And that always gnawed at me, but yet Christianity places tremendous pressure upon you to believe lies. And it just come to a point where I knew that that was what was happening. I was believing lies. They sounded good, but they weren't the truth. And like I said, if I'm going to be in something, I'm not going to waste my time believing lies. I want to know the truth. So what I had to do, I had to step away from all of that. And I remember many times, many days, many nights, crying out to the Father in prayer. I want to know the truth. I know something is wrong. I had to put my trust in him to straighten all this out because I knew something was wrong. And in time, on God's timetable, and in bite-sized portions, he revealed to me the truth. And it was there all the time. I simply was not listening. Who is that truth? Christ himself, his teachings. I was listening to Christianity. I wasn't listening to Christ. Christianity had my face stuck in a book and telling me that that book is the word of God. God said, no, my son is my word. And God essentially said, now he didn't say this in a voice that one can hear, but it's a different type of saying. But he said to me, who created the heavens and the earth? You did, Lord. Who sent you his only begotten son? You did, Lord. Who commanded you to listen to him? And this is at Luke chapter 9, verse 35. You did, Lord. Then why aren't you listening? I sent you my son. Something called Christianity sent you a book. And they're telling you that a book is the word of God. It is a person who is the word of God. And, it's, and it is because Christianity is pushing and promoting a book and placing it in a lofty and holy position is why many today are stumbled. They're saying things like the Bible says, well, wait a minute now. God says, listen to my son, listen to my son. So therefore it's what Jesus says, not what the Bible says. Jesus shows there at Matthew chapter five, beginning at uh, verse 21, going down to verse 48, that he was not in agreement with the things written in this book that, we, that men have named Bible. He was not in agreement. I did a video about this. So I had to submit to God's will that it is his son that he sent. It is his son that I am to listen to. Not human beings, not their books or their book, not their religions. I read from that book because Jesus is quoted in that book. But I know that the book itself is not the word of God. The one that God sent is the word of God. This book didn't come out of the heavenly realm. It came off of the printing presses of men. 
and that we are imperfect and flawed entities. We're prone to mistakes, we're prone to error. When we put our hands into it, we mess it up. It's like there's a story of a, of a king. And let's say God is that king, and God is a king, the ultimate king. But God has a message that he wants to give to the people. So he calls this messenger. And this is not a very good message. I'm not referring to Jesus Christ or any angel. This is just a story. But he gives this messenger his message to take to the people. And this messenger has to travel a long way to deliver that message. And God gives that messenger instructions. Do not open the message because God sealed it. Do not open the message to look at it. Open it only once you've reached your destination. So the messenger takes the message and he's on his way. Halfway into his journey, the messenger, you know, something is messing with his mind. This is the devil, right? <laughs> and he opens that message and he reads it, disobeying God's instructions. So the messenger reads the message. He seals it back up the best he can. Then he continues on his way and he reaches his destination. Now, when he gets to his destination, he calls the people before him. And rather than that messenger opening up that message, he begins to recite what he thought he read in that message from rote memory. So the original message that God gave that messenger was no longer God's message. That messenger changed God's message. That's where we are today. The entire world is alienated from its creator. The message has been badly tampered with Things like the Trinity, the rapture, eternal torment, and hellfire. Once saved, always saved. Do you see that? That is absolutely crazy. And what's even more crazy is that you can't reason with a lot of these Christians to get them to see that they've been misled, that the message that they have received from these false teachers and preachers and wherever they got it from those messages those teachings are not from God they're from another source so I can understand why individuals are confused about me I feel like it's me against the entire world I know there are others out there like me but I haven't found any yet not even one and many will say well then that means that you're false no it doesn't do you really believe that the majority will hold the truth no Jesus mentioned a small gate and a wide gate a wide road and narrow road there at uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 and many entered into the wide gate to be on that wide road and at the end of that road was destruction but on that small gate and that narrow road only a few were on it but at the end of that road was eternal life. So it's not gonna be a majority who would hold the truth. Yep, I've cut that uh, umbilical cord to the world and I've reconnected it to the source, the creator of the heavens and the earth. I want to draw knowledge and wisdom and understanding from him through his only umbilical cord, his son, Christ Jesus. 
I don't want to draw wisdom, understanding and knowledge from this world. And that's where many have stumbled and they've gone wrong is that they're connected to the world. And Jesus taught that we separate ourselves from the world. Jesus also taught at John chapter 18, verse 36, that his kingdom is not of this world. So why would anyone connect themselves to anything in this world, namely its religions? Yes, we have to live in the world. We have to eat and work and all that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the sources of wisdom and understanding and knowledge. Things are so bad now that people go to seminary schools and they get degrees, seminary degrees from, from men. And that gives them a license to teach God's word. So yep, I stepped off of the world and made a separation from it, severed that uh, umbilical cord, and I reconnected with uh, my creator. The best thing I've ever done in my life. I'm happier, more fulfilled. This is R. Jerome Harris, the disciple. Thank you for listening.